six months have now passed since the river was diverted. Along the length of the dam, at right angles to the dry riverbed, the enormous core trench has been excavated. This is necessary because the impermeable core has to reach right down to the solid, compact, underlying rock. The trench has been excavated in steps at both ends so that the core embeds itself better in the sides of the valley. This is what the site looked like after excavation work had been completed and when the first filling operations for the core were just starting. The first work on the core also involves removing every bit of loose material from the surface of the rock in the trench area. Great care needs to be exercised here to prevent water from the reservoir later seeping into the joint between the inner core of the dam and the underlying rock. The cohesive sandy soil for the inner core was dug from a side valley of the Mahaweli about three kilometers away from the dam and could be used in the dam almost without any further treatment. The filter layers separating both sides of the inner core from the rock fill were produced in the site crushing and screening plant like the aggregates for the concrete. The rock for the dam's supporting shells was obtained from a newly opened quarry sited not far from the dam. Sometimes the blasted rock required ripping for loading. Generally, the blasting operation produced material of a size which could be used directly in the dam. This is the dam 18 months after the filling operations had started. The available working surface gets smaller and smaller as the dam gets higher, particularly as it is also shared with general site traffic. Layer by layer, the dam edges up to its final height, about 90 meters above the floor of the valley. 